Hey, this is Angel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing narcissistic mothers. What is our expectation? Welcome to, or welcome back to, Narc Repellent. This channel is devoted to those seeking understanding, strategies, and support as they are recovering from narcissistic abuse and trauma of any kind. If you're interested in gaining further perspective on this subject, you've come to the right place. Our topic-related quote for the day comes from Jane Fonda. Parents are supposed to give the child back to herself with love. If they've got duct tape over their eyes because of narcissism, it doesn't happen. I've read that quote over and over. I really appreciate it more, especially because it was stated by a well-known old-time celebrity about her own parents who are also celebrities. I've heard similar statements a number of times before, but never with the duct tape analogy. I just love that. I'd now like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Share, like, and comment as you know YouTubers really need and appreciate that level of support to survive. Thank you so much. Okay, my new survivor friends, now let's jump into today's topic. I now believe I came out of my mother's womb filled with anxiety. After recent events and a romantic relationship with a narcissist, I was brought back to those flickering childhood memories, memories which the narcissist mirrored for me. I now realize that I fell for a narcissist in my older adulthood, mostly due to my childhood programming and brainwashing, most probably from my covertly narcissistic mother. After much research, as well as digging into my own childhood, it seems that narcissistic traits in a parent is never a good sign for creating a healthy child, but it appears that having a narcissistic mother as the dominant parent has its own significant experience of abuse and trauma, especially for a daughter. It's funny how we grow up believing our parents are perfect, or at least for the first number of years, they're all we know. We expect our parents should be the perfect role model for what we need to start our life. In adolescence, when we sp spend more time with peers, we find out how others' experiences at home can be very different from our own. I specifically remember being at summer camp when I was 13, probably a dozen girls hanging around chatting, getting to know each other. I can't even remember what was said, but I do remember being struck with the realization that my experience at home was very different from anybody else. The fairy tale marriage of my parents and my perfect childhood fantasy was smashed that very moment. And then I forgot all about that summer. Close to 50 years after that sweet summer camp experience, I find myself again realizing how childhood has affected my ability to attract and to be attracted to, in a romantic way, a mentally healthy individual. Specifically, my childhood as the only daughter in a second-generation European immigrant family with three brothers was seriously corrupted, leaving me with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, or CPTSD. That's when I began my current research on narcissism, narcissistic abuse, and childhood trauma. That led me to understanding narcissistic parents and mother wounds, which I'll save for another video. I'm left with many questions about motherhood and what I should or could have expected had things gone another way. In this video, I'd like to share what I learned about mothering and what we should expect and what happens when that goes wrong by having a narcissist or toxic mother or parent. I'm sure the experience is different for all of us, whether we grew up with a mother or father who is a narcissist. For my purposes here, I'll be using the term mother to represent adult caregiver of any kind. I'd like to share some examples of my own mother's um, teachings, I'll call them, and then I'd like to share some strategies for recovering and healing from this type of abuse and trauma. Some questions we all, we may all have about our mothers. One, what should mothers be expected to provide for their infant child in order to develop into a healthy adult? Well, hold, comfort their child, this provides the child with a feeling of safety and security, knowing that person will always be there for them. A mother should nurture and encourage her child, providing food for the child's soul and confidence in their own person. A mother should be compassionate, empathetic, providing for the child to be sensitive to others' beliefs and validated for who they are. <clears throat> a mother should be trustworthy and have a connection to her child providing the child with a sense of trust and a secure attachment. Number two, what happens when we don't get what we need from our mother? What if those traits are not present in the mom? We may end up feeling unworthy. We may feel defective. We most probably feel unlovable, 
and we may become fearful and anxious. We end up growing up thinking that we need to persevere in order to get what we need and what we want. Love and attention at any cost. Number three, what if our mother was cruel? How does a child grow up feeling then? Well, you grow up feeling like life isn't safe. People are not here for me. I may not survive. I may not have my own identity. We grow up wondering, who am I really? And why is this world so challenging? Becoming attached to any who will re replicate this familiar feeling. Number four, if we grew up in households like this and try for a lifetime to get mother's approval, how would we see ourselves in our mother's eyes? Maybe we were a mistake. We are an inconvenience. We'll never be good enough. We end up being like a doormat. We grow up believing we deserve this kind of treatment. We allow abuse because it's what we knew. It's our programming, our brainwashing. We grow up feeling unloved, unworthy, alone, and afraid of everything. Number five. When you grow up with a mother like this, what is the potential for developing that child's mental health? A child will grow up to be one of two types in this type of environment, either narcissistic or codependent. If the child becomes a narcissist, there's no capacity for love. The child mirrors the traumas and insecurities of the parent in other relationships. The child is wounded, selfish, unavailable, leading to an attraction to people who will love and give them everything they are and have as was not available in childhood. Or the child may become codependent, someone who is wounded, selfish, unavailable, leading to an attraction to people who provide the familiar abuse and trauma that we knew in childhood. There is so much more to this last list, but I'm hoping this will suffice for the next bit of information. The motherly lessons or rules I was taught as a young girl. The first one, your mother is the only one who can have and express any emotion ever. There were temper tantrums, there were narcissistic rages, these were usually directed at my dad, but I remember myself crouching near her during these episodes, weeping, asking how I could help make it better. She would yell, scream, use the most disgusting vulgarity against my dad, slam cupboard doors, closet doors, a very scary scene for a sweet, sensitive little kid. Also, no one else can have any needs. Get used to not having your needs met or your wants and opinions validated. The second thing would be, your mother is better than you. You should expect competition, competition around friends or even boyfriends, about my education, my accomplishments. Number three, your mother has no real interest in you, how you feel, your interests, your hobbies. The only important hobbies and interests are hers. Perhaps if you take up the same hobbies, it would be better. <laughs> um, number four, your mother will use triangulation with you to manipulate and control you used my father to get to me knowing I felt closer to him, would tell me stories about my dad that upset me. I'd tell him and then she'd blame me for them not getting along. And then she would promise the same inheritances to me that she promised my brothers. Talk about causing trouble in a family. Number five, your mother's a liar. She will lie about everything and anything. She will use you as an excuse to lie to others. She will be very confused about the truth and how that represents reality for you. The next thing she wanted me to learn was to let the boys win. What? After easily beating my brothers at games or sports, my mother told me that I should let the boys win. When I had a boyfriend and we had a big ping pong table in the den, she told me I should let him win. Even when we went bowling. Yikes. What does that set a girl up for for the rest of her life? Number seven, play the damsel in distress. When my first husband took forever to get to mowing the lawn, she advised that I get a lawnmower out around the time he would be expected to arrive home from work, act like I couldn't make the mower start, and then he would want to rescue me. Ha! And then, knowing how bright I was, she suggested that I dummy down in order to get the attentions of men. Oh my God. I guess you can tell I grew up in the late 50s, early 60s. This is what mothers did. The last one for now is, you cannot move out when you want to, you move out when it's convenient for me. I wanted to move out at 18, but she wasn't ready. 
Mom informed me that her plan was for me to move out at 21, as that was when she would be ready to divorce my dad. I was told she would disown me if I moved out on my own accord. I should feel guilt for abandoning her. Yikes, again. All right, well, now that that has been said, what's more important now is what do we do to start healing from this kind of crazy, traumatic, abusive childhood? The first thing and the most important thing is to understand narcissism, study, research, get counseling, gain a vast understanding of narcissistic abuse and resulting trauma that you've had to endure. Know and trust that you deserve love. The second thing, resolve childhood traumas in order to create new realities. This is really important. You're probably going to need to seek therapeutic support, spiritual solutions. You may need a witness to this transformation. Number three, you need to honor your soul, your spirit, your psyche, your heart by loving yourself, respecting yourself. Number four, authentically love and honor who you are with truth and reality. Check in with yourself daily about how you feel and what you think. Keep a journal of affirmations and celebrations of your growth. Number five, create and adhere to strong, impermeable boundaries. Don't give away your power. Don't let other weaken your boundaries. That is disrespecting yourself. Number six, don't let our kids carry on this genetic message, for goodness sakes. Love your kids unconditionally. Educate them about toxic relationships. Be fair, kind, nurturing, and compassionate with them. Number seven, keep close friendships to remind you of how awesome of a person you are, to keep you balanced and focused on your path. Love those whom you trust and keep them close. Number eight, you may need support groups, therapy, YouTube communities. Number nine, Keep going forward in your life, setting goals, learning, and growing. Once we begin to understand how this childhood abuse from a narcissistic or toxic parent, mother, affected us, we can do what we need to heal in order to move on. We can set ourselves free from this abuse. You can set yourself free from threats of future abuse, free from dependencies, free from the guilt, the shame, the remorse, when we are free to live our lives, our real, true self can begin. If you've been through anything like this, please know there are many avenues of support. Know that you are not alone in this struggle. Don't stay isolated. Get good help. It takes time to heal. Give yourself lots of time. What are the lessons here today? Our childhood came and went with most of us not in our power and out of our control. If we were manipulated and brainwashed by toxic or narcissistic parents, we weren't loved and cared for in a way that enriched our ability to thrive in love in our future. There is much healing to do in order to move on into truth, love, and healthy, long-lasting relationships. But obviously, we're survivors. We're strong, and we know we're loving, gentle, patient, caring, and incredible human beings. We deserve great love and great joy. I wish all of that for you, my new friends. Always remember to be kind to yourself, my survivor friends. Forgive yourself. Remember that you are loved. You are a worthy person just because you are you. If your first caregivers like mine did not give you that message, you need to give it to yourself. It's pretty empowering. Hey, thank you so much for spending the time with me today. Have a great and beautiful day.